then on the second run through, the i7 2.2555X got 749, and the i7 2.6 with Vega 16 got 646. Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you as many benchmarks as I can. Uh, it's not gonna be like the last video where I talk too much. I'm just gonna just show you in depth all the tests I kind of ran, all that kind of stuff. I will point out a few findings I've noticed, and that is, uh, yeah, they have updated the cooling system, and um, it's, I haven't gone into the internals, but externally, if you look at the, the fans, they now ramp up to 6,050 RPMs, whereas uh, the older ones, they went up to 5,950. So that's an extra 100 RPMs. So that's why you might be getting uh, higher scores on Synbench and all that kind of stuff. Secondly, um, when you hit the GPU and CPU 100% at the same time, they start to contend with each other on the amount of power that's being delivered. So on the Mojave, they've um, now stopped the battery drain when um, the charger's plugged in. Previously, it would eat into the, the charge coming out of the, the power adapter and the internal battery, whereas now you just get everything from the charge point. So they start to fight each other on who can get uh, the most amount of power to, to drive their, their beastly machines. And they've got better thermals at the cost of obviously louder fan noise. And it is um, considerably <laughs> loud because on this one, <laughs> I couldn't hear the fans ramping out because this one was going so loud. So that is uh, pretty interesting, but um, there is performance again to be made. So you'll see that it does um, handle playing 3D faster. And uh, some things about for your video editors out there, I did some better tests with um, pure effects focused uh, rendering. So if you're um, trying to play back footage, which uh, uses that new denoising plugin in Final Cut Pro in better quality, you will have to render out both clips, so same thing on 555X and the same thing on the Vega 16. On the 555X, um, I can get away with two film grain clips in better quality without it having any sluggishness on the timeline, whereas on the Vega 16, I can now have three. So there's an improvement there, and also the rendering times are quicker. Um, at a certain cost, so for example, um, the Vega 16, it rendered out the clip between 30 to 40% faster when I had up to two film grain effects applied. However, when I went up to four film grain effects, it was only a 10% delta. So if you have a little bit of effects, you will be getting a big performance boost from the Vega graphics cards. However, if you overload it and have too many effects, it will start to fight each other and the difference will become more balanced. All right, I'm gonna just chuck in all the benchmarks I've done now. Uh, for your critique, let me know what you think. And uh, some, some news, a lot of the comments in the last video, a lot of people are saying that they just, they weren't happy with their 560Xs and they just took it to Apple and uh, Apple gave them a refund with no questions asked. So maybe Apple's got a new policy now because when I talked to them, they said no. So um, if you are having regrets on your 560X, um, yeah, you can give them a shot. Apple Store seem to be have changed their, their policy. So give that a shot. Check the comments below in the, the previous video for support and advice on how to get that done. Me personally, I'm still a bit undecided. I do like that these machines are now beasts. They're proper beast modes. They, the fans are going crazy like the proper Alienware laptops. Um, but, you know, I don't like fan noise. So I might just consider just keeping what I currently have. And in future, maybe I'll just get an eGPU if I need the rendering performance or an Xbox One X, PS4 Pro, that kind of stuff. All right, peace, arrivederci, enjoy the show, bye. This guy's gonna be the end of world's test. We're gonna be hitting up an advanced 3D application over here, using up all of that GPU, and we're gonna hit run at the same time. One, two, three, let's go. So the fans have ramped up here to 4,000, and the fans here are currently 3,000. 4,500, 4,200, 5,000 over here. 4,600, this one's finished at 796, and this guy's finished at 727, which is weird. So we'll run it again one more time. One, two, three, let's go. I'll show you how our CPU and GPU are fighting against each other. So over here, we've got the Radeon's using currently 40, and this Radeon's using 30. And the second run through, the i7 2.2555X got 749, 
and the i7 2.6 with Vega 16 got 646. Let's do a third run through. One, two, three, let's go. Fans, this guy's going 5,900, and this guy's going 5,975, 5,875, 6,025. So this guy's fans are just ramping up slightly more than this guy's. And let's see, Intel Power Gadget. We can see that this guy's using 35 watts on the CPU, and this guy's using 23 watts on the CPU. And the GPU, we can see this guy's still using 40 watts on the GPU. And this guy is only using 30 watts. So I think the extra 10 watts is being pumped into the CPU because this guy's going 30 and this guy's on 20 on the CPU. So the, the Vega 16 is currently starving the GPU, making it run slower than this guy, even though this guy has a weaker CPU. So this guy's about to finish the third run. And you can see that this guy's finished 778. And this guy, he's... Uh, lagging behind a little bit let's see uh he's got 624 friends make sure you elevate your mac like this and put it a bit far away from you because it's gonna get noisy yowzers now just some quick tips if you are doing some benchmarking at home make sure you go into preferences and set your screen update resolution to the maximum one and if you're using iStat, make sure your update frequency is very slow. That will mean that you get the most performance in the applications and less performance will go into these monitoring tools and you'll get better results from it. All right, over to the performance tests. Let's do some benchmarking, some benchmarking. All right, this application is called Maya, which is, in case you don't know, Arabic for water. So on the left is the Vega 16 and on the right, the 555X. And, you know, it's uh, for a, a 40,000 vert model, it's hard to distinguish. I think the Vega one's actually rendering it slightly faster, but it's hard to tell. So what I've got here is I'm going to load up a much bigger model. All right, so we got a nice little Michael Jackson robot. And as you can see, uh, or maybe you can't see, maybe it's hard to tell, but... The left one is much smoother than the right. Although, you know, it's still usable, still usable. But yeah, much smoother on the right. Look at that, look at that. And this one. And uh, lighting, actually, the lights are on on this one. But for this one, this is actually an animation. It's cool. It turns into a car because it's a transformer. So let's hit play at the same time. One, two, three, go. And they seem, yep, the left is definitely faster. It's rendering the frames much quicker. Well, when I say much, slightly quicker but you could see there was a big difference in playback you can see this one's just jumping through the frame very smoothly yeah so it's, it is definitely smoother on the left with the vega but it's not super smooth but you know whatever if you up the verts this this guy's three hundred and fifty thousand verts so if you're looking into the range of a million two million had a complicated heated free scene you're going to be asking for trouble Three, two, one. We got 68,000 versus 49,000. We got the highest, it shot up to seven for a moment. And this guy shot up to 14 for a moment. So that's where the cookie crumbled on one of those tasks. It did a really good job. Uh, let's see how it does with an external monitor now. It's actually running faster with an external monitor plugged in. Is that right? 68, it shot up to 71. I don't understand these guys, a bit mental. The fans, exactly the same. And on the high side, obviously it went a lot higher. It went up to 20 watts. Next up, gonna be doing a bit of Final Cut Pro. So let's try playing back this video at 4X speed. And oh, that's a bit interesting. So I'm just gonna be playing back this segment here. As you can see, it still struggles on those overlays, so you won't be getting any improvement there. I guess that's a CPU bottleneck. All right now, the CPU is jumping to about 2.6, and it's using 15 watts of power. And the fans are still at 2,000. We'll see if that changes in a bit. The high side, it's using 11.5 watts, so not much of the GP 15 watts, actually. I'll take that back. 
but not that much usage of the GPU in Final Cut when it comes to just playing back media. So I don't think we're gonna get that much of an improvement over here. As you see, it's getting a bit skipping frames there. And this is, uh, by the way, a multicam shoot. So there is multiple cameras happening over here. And generally the fans seem to be okay. So it's still not using that much power. I guess the next thing I wanna do is I wanna do a render. Now normally with Final Cut, it has background rendering turned on by default and that kills your CPU. It makes everything run a bit slow. So what I tend to do is always render when I feel like it. So I'm gonna render out this section, show you how long it takes, and more importantly, show you if it affects the rendering or the CPU. Right now, the fans are kicking in. It's going around 3,800 RPM at 74 degrees Celsius, the CPU. I think it's primarily the fans are coming in because of the GPU's wattage usage. That's my, because the CPU isn't actually going that hard. It's only going about 2.3 gigahertz and it's only using around 10 watts. So it's not that bad. Whereas the GPU is the one that's using 26 watts over here and the fans are hitting 4,000 right now. All right, we've hit 100%. The fans are at 4,850 and you can see the GPU was just bashing it out between 15 up to 30 watts at the most and just going up and down, a lot of spikes there. Let's see how it does on the 555X. You can tell this is the, my current one because I've covered up the, the camera and make sure it's all deleted. Wait till the fans calm down. And second time round, it's finished at 4,700. And it, is that it? 10 seconds? Hmm. All right, let's do some Yanati. Three, two, one, go. Let's see how fast they launch. It's kind of fun. They're pretty much working exactly the same. This guy's using a bit more CPU. Yeah, it's 22. Oh, my. Yeah, it's about the same. Who am I kidding? Going about the same speed. These uh, computers are about the same. That's what they're called, about the same. This one's slightly hard. Look at that, 92. That doesn't make sense. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pause this right now. I'm gonna do an SMC reset on this guy just in case there's something wrong with that. And I'll rejoin this in a sec. Right shift key, left option key left control key and wait press hold the power button one one two three four five six one two three i have no idea what i'm doing all right let's start this up oh um all right we're back I'm gonna sort it back out again we're back here boom shakalaka it's still you know can't really tell much difference between the two, to be honest. New game. New game. One, two, three, go. Alright, so once again, the fan speed on this guy is 3,300, whereas the fan speed on this guy is 2,100. See that big spike, look at that. That went to 35 watts, and this guy went to 27. So this is using less watts but the fans are spiking more. Maybe because this one's completing the tasks quicker. It uses it for a fraction of a second, whereas this guy needs a couple of seconds, which makes the, the heat build up. And wow, this one actually completed it faster. <sighs> this one's, this, this guy's fans now hitting it up, 4,000 now. So maybe because the fans were slightly higher up on this filler, it allowed them to go faster at a quicker rate. So that's why he completed the task quicker. So the 555X with the slow CPU built this project faster than the faster CPU and better graphics cards. Yowzers. All right, let's play. Max resolution, 3,360. 3,360, that's some serious res. Break this computer, please. It's, it's broken, it's bro they're, they're both broken. <sighs> hmm. Maybe I should have got the Vega 20. Um, maybe it's this performance monitoring tools. Let's see what we got at the moment. So, 
GP. Oh, 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 oh. Made of Unity. There you go. I feel this one's a lot more sluggish. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one on the right is definitely faster. Definitely faster. And over here, we got 4,000. And over here, you got 4,500. So the better graphics does come at a cost now. Let's jump into our GPU performance monitor. And let's see what the peaks were. So over here on the right, this one was jumping all the way up to 45 watts. Damn it, that's high. That's really high. And this guy was jumping just to 30 watts. So the 555X is limited to 30 watts, whereas this guy went all the way to 45. Yowzers. Yowzers indeed. Because that wattage is going to eat up into your CPU. But for, I guess, applications like this, it, it's worthwhile. You can balance it. But again, it came at a cost of fan noise, even though this guy's fans were kicking up a bit prematurely. So that's enough Unity. Let's get in some gear, real gaming. All right, I've now put it on this uh, big ultra wide display because I want it to run a bit slower, basically. Yeah, so this is now 30 frames a second. Well, aren't we All right, Whoa, yowzas. Yup, yup. Okay, this is now 35 frames a second. 26 frames a second. Oh, wow, why is it so slow? It's really slow. That's weird, isn't it? Oh, it's really bad. Alright, I'm putting on low settings and let's see if that does anything. That's faster. Oh, okay, that's fast. That's nice. Oh, you're good. So, all right, we're now on the Vega train. Options. Let's see. Uh, graphics. Without a bottom, maximum screen quality is auto detected maximum. I'm gonna put V Sync on because I like V Sync. Alright, 38 frames a second, 37 frames a second. Nice, no, still a bit slow. I think this game's got problems. I think it's just a game. You think? Yeah, look, it's just, it's just poorly programmed. You know what? I'll try high. Uh, it, feels, it feels a bit slow. But the graphics are better. Oh, the graphics are awesome, but it's, it feels slow. 45 frames a second, 30. Nice, no, still slow, look. Let's see what they find. Oh, no, that's no, nice. No, no, that's good. Maybe this... Oh, wow. No, it's fine. It's working well. It's not 60, it's 47, 48. 48 frames a second. But it's definitely playable. Oh, that was a good kick. All right, now it's medium. Yeah, this is 60. This is fast. This is fast now. All right, so you get from low to medium when you switch. So it's definitely, ooh, wow, nice move. That was a good, ooh, I like this angle. Babe, you're missing out on this angle. You gotta watch. That's enough. Let's get back to do some work. Makos work. All right, now it's the dreaded battery life test. Let's do it one by one. Maximum brightness. And let's start with YouTube and some gaming on YouTube. And this is a 40 minute video, so I shall make it 2x the speed. Two hours and 51 and two hours and 54, although this is the fresher battery. Um, now we're gonna go Final Cut. And let's start playing. All right, what's interesting here is the battery life estimate on Vega is now two hours and 17 minutes, whereas on the 555X, it's two hours and 27 minutes. <sighs> you know what? Take my money, Apple! Take it! I'm out!